Hello, it's me again, Elizabeth of the Naomi Talk. And this morning, I'm so glad to have you joining me. There are a few things I want. I have picked when we have the Naomi Talk sessions that we do. By the way, we run a mentorship program called the Naomi Talk, and we are doing season eight. Ha, huh? eight, beginning in the month of March, and uh, I. I look at the testimonies these ladies give and I I feel like for sure I'm leaving my purpose to touch people's lives, to transform them, to shed light, to equip them and to make them feel like they are important, like they're on the right path and where they need to polish up on a few issues, then for these uh, ladies we are able to do that. And this question keeps propping up. I mean, how do I have a good relationship? How do I work on a good relationship? Or some ask, how do I sustain the good relationship that I already have? Number one, I always say, get the foundation right. Because if you miss it at the foundation level, then you will have struggles and challenges that are not uh, going to be easy for you. Now, I have a few strands here. This is a two strand. We braid a lot. So sometimes you have it done this way or other times you have it done this way. Now, you know very well, this is a three strands. This one is very hard to undo. I cannot do, this is the center, right? I cannot undo it from here. Even if I really tried, I can't. I have to move all the way, either cut it around here and then start to undo it, okay? Now, with this one, I can undo it, even from the base. It's very simple. I just untwist it like that, and there, I have it already running out. So for any relationship to be sustained, make sure it has got you, your fiancé, and God. But God has to be at the center for you to have a three-strand affair that is firm, that is strong, that can withstand the storms of life. Because you know what? Storms in life will come. They're inevitable. Nobody will tell you that they have done life in marriage 10 years, 15 years, and they have not encountered situations that almost drew them apart, that almost drew them away from each other. But what keeps them going is that the foundation is a three strands affair. Is a what? Is a three strands affair. Is a what? Three strands affair. Don't do life. Don't do that relationship without God. I know many times we, <laughs> when the goosebumps are speaking so loudly, you found this girl, you found this girl, and you, you, something else is driving you. You feel like you're on another planet and on the face of the earth you still have to call yourself back to the place of, you know what, God, what is your opinion about this? You can't keep running to God when things are going south. However, this is something else you need to add to it. Learn to communicate and communicate well and effectively. I beseech you, effectively and well. Now, it doesn't mean you'll be saying all the sweet words all the time. Uh -uh. There are times you'll be hurt. There are times you'll be offended. There are times you'll be angry. There are times you'll be happy. You can't be uh, communicating wrongly and expecting a relationship to move on well. Now, communication is the oxygen supply to any relationship that we get into. At the place of work, you need to communicate, communicate effectively. When you're communicating with your children, you have to do it and do it effectively for them to hear you to understand you, to get you right, for you to get results, okay, is the oxygen supply. Now, for those church meetings that we go to or any other event that you go to, communication is the oxygen supply because it's the only place people get to understand what you desire, the results you want, how you feel. Now, how are we communicating in our relationships? And I say it. It's not only when you're very happy, even when you're angry, even when you're at your lowest. And for women, when your hormones are everywhere, how are we also communication? Because once you do it wrong, everything else starts to move in the wrong direction. 
you have to hit a compromise. Now, compromise simply means this may not be what I wanted. However, I give in, not out of anger or bitterness, but it's an expression of my love. It's a, it's a way of expressing my love and trust that whatever suggestion, whatever idea you have is good for the two of us. It means well. So I withhold mine and we go by yours. Alternatively, we look at mine, we look at your idea, we put them together and we reach a place where we can have a consensus and blend the two and have a an hybrid of an idea, of a suggestion that we can work with. And you have to do what? Exercise respect. Now, each one of us comes into this union when we are adults. We have come from different backgrounds. We have come from different upbringings. And your way of doing things may not be my way of doing things. There are things I don't appreciate when they are done in a certain manner. But I have to respect where you're coming from. It doesn't mean that you're, you're right. No. I have to respect where you're coming from. I have to respect your opinion. I have to respect your values. Respect simply says, I love you and I honor you. And just as you are, I appreciate you. That is what respect simply says. And what you don't like, I will not push it in. I will not rub it in. I will not keep pressurizing you on those areas or pressing the buttons on those areas that you really don't feel like you want them pushed. Lastly, let's use our words wisely. Words have power. Words can build. Words can destroy. Words can set a fire. And a big fire for that matter. And words, I want to say this, can be fuel added to a fire. What do you say to one another when you're not happy? What do you say to one another when you're happy? I think some people want to be very economical with your words and only use them when the temperature is hot, when things are not okay, when things are not right. And then we don't use words again when we need to affirm people, when we need to congratulate them, when we need when they need to hear that they are appreciated for their achievements that they have achieved in as much as there are those that appreciate that as their love language even if it's not your love language i mean who doesn't want to hear that they're being applauded for the good job they have done or for their achievements that they have achieved in that union guess what cheer your own <laughs> be the first cheerleader of your spouse of your friend of your husband because you know what? If you don't cheer them very well, they will desire to be cheered. What did I say? They will desire to be cheered. So be their first cheerleader. Stand out, celebrate them. Use your words well to build them. Because out here is a forest with wild animals ready to chew you, ready to destroy you. And once you have been able to conquer, if it is a small thing that you have conquered, you need someone to celebrate you. Do you celebrate someone quietly? No, you celebrate them verbally with your words. Speak it out. Use your words well. And I assure you, your union, combined with good communication, combined with the fact that you hit a compromise, combined with the fact that you respect each other's space and boundaries, and of course, there's the love that put you together, you are going to have a seriously strong union. God bless you and have a lovely day.